The News of the World, Wednesday, February 25th. Once again, Columbia's correspondents in world capitals and in the fighting zones in the Western Pacific are ready to give you the latest news direct by shortwave radio. This morning, we shall call in London, Los Angeles, and try to bring a direct report from somewhere in Java. In addition, Harry Marble will report on the news at points not covered by our direct pickup. But first, here are the highlights. Allied warplanes have gone into action over MacArthur Straits again. Two enemy transports were sunk. A third jet transport was sunk elsewhere. Fighting continues on Bali, Sumatra, and Timor. Japanese raiders appeared over many points in Java and again raided Port Moresby. Now, Harry Marble. This is Java. Enemy bombers buried their anti-airport campaign in Java yesterday with a prolonged attack on the harbor at Panjang Priok, waterfront suburb of Batavia. According to tonight's communique of the NEI fighting forces, the attack was carried out by 16 planes, which came over the formation. And when forced to break formation by Dutch anti-aircraft fire, returned to the scene in small groups and carried out their attacks individually. Although the attacks lasted for approximately an hour, the communique says damages and losses were small, but nearly all of the bombs dropped into the water. Actually, there was very little shipping in the harbor at Tanjong Priyak yesterday, nor has there been for the past few days. The Tavians are still unable to understand why the Japanese delayed this long-expected attack so long because an air raid timed to follow the evacuation of Singapore could hardly have failed to result in enormous losses. The same might have been said to the first naval objective near Surabaya, but very little damage resulted. Yesterday's air activities over various parts of Java resulted in one Japanese fighter and one Japanese bomber known to have been shot down, while three other fighters, five of the bombers, are believed to have met the same fate. The communique explains that the peculiar terrain of Java makes it very hard to trace destroyed aircraft, which reach the ground at remote locations, and only planes actually traced are reported destroyed. Now, we take you now to London and Joseph Evans, Jr. The Japanese raided Port Morrissey, New Guinea, again today. Reports of yesterday's raid just received, Rick just received, show, however, that damage was slight and that only one person was killed and five injured. There is no confirmation in London of the reports that British troops were still fighting isolated actions at Singapore. Churchill's disclosure that more than 73,000 British, Australian, and Indian soldiers had been captured when Singapore fell left little hope that any small group still holding out would get very far against the gap. The Royal Air Force was in action again last night, laying mines in enemy waters. Although the British communique did not reveal the area, the German news agency reported that the planes were over Heligoland Bight, where the three big German warships sought shelter after their daring escape from France. During a fighter sweep over France yesterday afternoon, the toughness of the city fire was proven again. When one hit a telephone pole in a low-level attack and still came home, with a part of the broken-off pole jammed in the wind. It was piloted by an American, pilot officer J.J. Lynch, of that Alhambra, California, who was a member of the Royal Canadian Air Force squadron. Lynch admitted that his plane rocked more than a little bit after the collision, but said that he hadn't realized it had been such a near thing until he found a piece of the pole after landing at his home airport. No enemy action was reported over Britain. Posting from the House of Commons yesterday revealed that Germany has promised safe conduct for a ship to carry fleets to starving Greece. The British authorities are still waiting for it.